I am the only one she has. If I wasn't around, who knows where she'd be. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV true crime biopics. But after that case in January, Dunch had a bunch more, which were all, shall we say, less than successful. But two of them were borderline monstrous. For this list, we're looking at the best adaptations of true crime stories for the small screen. Is there any true crime story you would like to see adapted into a series? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Dahmer Monster – The Jeffrey Dahmer Story More often than not, series about real-life serial killers inherently inspire controversy, and Dahmer Monster – The Jeffrey Dahmer Story is no exception. Jeff. Jeff. I'm Aaron. This is Don and Tracy. So you're gonna make a move on one of us, play? Are you gonna walk off like last time? Shortly after the series dropped on Netflix, social media was abuzz with posts criticizing the true crime miniseries. Most of this criticism stemmed from reactions to the series by the family of one of Dahmer's victims, who asserted that the series, quote, re-traumatized them and that they were never contacted by Netflix or showrunner Ryan Murphy about the show's creation. And I told you over and over a million times that something was going on and you know what you did? Y'all did nothing! Nonetheless, all of the controversy only made Monster more enticing to viewers. The series became an overnight sensation, raking in views equivalent to Stranger Things' fourth season, and once again proving that any press is good press. Can I ask, why do you think you did it? Killed all these men, and why did you keep them? Number nine, Dr. Death. As a Peacock original, Dr. Death didn't receive nearly the same publicity as its contemporaries of the same genre, but it more than made up for its obscurity with its stellar critical response. I don't want him near me. Not ever again. You keep Dr. Dunch away. Based on the podcast of the same name, the series focuses on Christopher Dunch, a neurosurgeon infamous for maiming his patients. This malpractice included everything from operating on the wrong part of a patient's back to allowing a patient to bleed to death. It went exactly as long as it was supposed to in order to get it done right. So there were no complications? I don't have complications. Every doctor has complications. Not me. Although the premise could have easily led to a gory, inappropriate disaster, the series twists viewer expectations by focusing a significant amount of its runtime on those trying to get Dunch disbarred rather than on the titular doctor. There is no glorification to be seen here. This isn't right. No, it isn't. We got our own study, Janine. You need to say something. Number eight. Candy. It's hard to imagine how someone could get away with a murder they confessed to, but Candy Montgomery did just that. You stand charged with the first degree felony offense of murder. So how do you plead? Not guilty. This eponymous series about the days before and after her crime attempts to explain her story and just how she convinced a jury to let her walk free. Critics raved about the series' choice to present the story as a non-linear narrative and praised the performances of its series' leads, Jessica Biel and Melanie Linsky. Well, hi, Betty, it's Candy, listen. The girls are just having so much fun and just begged for another night. I know we never do two nights in a row, but I just figured you had your hands full with that darling baby and that you Pop star Justin Timberlake also makes a surprising appearance in a recurring role as Deputy Steve Defabaugh, proving once again that he has what it takes to be a serious dramatic actor. She just walked out the door and uh, she walked out the door and left that baby in that crib crying for her mother for 13 hours. Number 7. The Girl from Plainville Can a person be convicted of manslaughter for sending text messages? This may seem like a nonsensical question, but it became all too real of a scenario for the parents of Conrad Roy when it was discovered that his girlfriend had sent a series of texts encouraging his self-imposed death. A two-part documentary was released covering the case in 2019, but largely focused on the highly publicized trial and ensuing verdict. Ms. Carter, a guilty finding have an entered on the indictment charging you with the involuntary manslaughter of Conrad Roy III now sentences you to two and a half years in the Bristol County House of Correction. 
it wouldn't be until 2022 that the girl from Plainville provided an in-depth, dramatized portrayal of the days leading up to Roy's death. The series humanized its teenage subjects in a way that trial footage never could, and attempted to explain how such a horrific thing could happen to someone so young. I know I'm only 17, but I wanted to spend the rest of my life with them. Number six, the act. Every once in a while, a new story comes along that proves the old adage that the truth is stranger than fiction. I think something's wrong. Can you send someone over, please? What's going on? Me and my mom are outside right now. Their car is here, but nobody's answering the door. Hey? Is that why you're worried, man? No one's answering the door? This is certainly true of the story of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, a teenage girl who helped kill her mother. In order to control and isolate Gypsy, Dee Dee claimed her daughter had a myriad of health conditions, including leukemia, asthma, and muscular dystrophy from a young age. She's got the epilepsy, <laughs> paraplegia, a heart murmur. She can barely take anything by mouth. Unnecessary medications and claims of lost medical records helped to sell the lie, both to doctors and Gypsy herself. Although the act was late in adapting the unbelievable tale following a documentary and Lifetime film, the performances made the series worthwhile, even landing Joey King an Emmy nomination and Patricia Arquette an Emmy win. Gypsy, what happened with your mom that night? Um, uh, I don't know what happened with my mom at all. Number five, The Dropout. In 2003, Elizabeth Holmes dropped out of college to found Theranos and quickly became the world's youngest woman to be a self-made billionaire. What we want to offer are wellness centers. Here, the customer waits for his painless, efficient, low-cost Theranos blood test in America's favorite drugstore. Unfortunately, Theranos was built on a lie. A series of challenges and investigations led to the unraveling of the health tech company, exposing one of the most egregious cases of corporate fraud in American history. I'm sorry, but what exactly is an outlier? Because it seems to me like it's just a data point that isn't doing what you want it to do. And we I consider that just... an outlier. Okay, but then there would be outliers in every data run we've generated so far. Right, and we delete outliers. The white collar crime was chronicled on a popular podcast entitled The Dropout, which eventually led to a dramatized series being made under the same name. Even more intriguing than its predecessor, the series easily maintained week by week popularity, and according to Nielsen Holdings, was the most watched show in the week of its penultimate episode's release. It's hard for some women to get out of their old thinking. It was hard for me, so it should be hard for you, but. You have to make sure that if you're out there and you have a new idea, you don't listen to a single person who tells you that you can't do it. Number four, unbelievable. Many true crime stories lend themselves to the thriller genre, delving into the psyche of a presumed killer or con man as they leave a trail of victims in their wake. Are you okay? Come here. I'm so sorry this happened. I'm so, so, so sorry. By contrast, Unbelievable is a more slow-paced and emotion-fueled story, portraying a timely look at the Washington and Colorado serial assault cases through the eyes of Marie, a teenager charged with falsely reporting a crime. And if your answer turns out to be a lie, I have no choice but to arrest you and put you in jail. Wait, why? Making a false statement is a crime for a reason. Although the series lacks the heart-pounding tension of other true crime fare, it still manages to be an engrossing drama with standout performances from leads Caitlin Deaver, Merritt Weaver, and Tony Collette. Unbelievable also carries an important message along with its intriguing story, highlighting the difficulty of reporting sex crimes and the lengths some victims must go to to be believed. Our first interview, she kept calling herself stupid for leaving her window open. Like every person in Colorado doesn't leave a window cracked at night. Number three, landscapers. In 1998, William and Patricia Witcherly were buried in their own backyard. 14 years later, they were finally found. I can confirm that yesterday morning, two bodies were found buried in the back garden of a house in Mansfield. At present, we cannot confirm the identities of the deceased. The culprits behind their death were determined to be their daughter Susan and her husband Christopher, who had been using the Witcherly's identities to commit fraud and purchase costly movie memorabilia in the years following the deaths. For you, madame, I'll make a special price. 250. 
Uh, no, um, Francois, too much. Sorry. How about 200? I could possibly stretch to 100, but... Starring Olivia Colman and David Thewlis, Landscapers takes a darkly comedic look at the criminal couple and their path to the courtroom. Flawlessly executed fantasy sequences mirroring the film Susan and Christopher loved help to set the series apart from other true crime, as does its surprisingly sympathetic slant to its morally gray subjects. Everything's gonna be all right. Okay, baby? I promise. Number two, When They See Us. Traditionally, true crime series focus on criminals we're meant to root against. I've got to face a judge and prosecute this, Linda. What is your case? Our case is they're all guilty. Murderers, con men, and others who you hope to see behind bars by the final episode. By contrast, When They See Us focuses on a case the court got wrong. As important as it is engaging, the series is based on the Central Park Jogger case, which involved five young men charged with involvement in an assault they had nothing to do with. The jury finds the defendant guilty. The boys convicted were all black and Latino, with their race playing a significant role in their indictment. The dramatization made re-evaluating the decades-old case unavoidable, forcing viewers to grapple with the dangerous imperfections of the American justice system. We are here to point the finger at the white press who have failed. You have failed to properly investigate this. You have failed to ask the right questions. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Staircase In December of 2001, a woman by the name of Kathleen Peterson was found bleeding at the bottom of her staircase. Please, my wife, she had an accident. She's still breathing. What kind of accident? She, she fell down the stairs. She's still breathing. Please come. Is she conscious? What? Is she conscious? No, she's not conscious. Although her husband insisted the death was an accident, local police were unconvinced. I'm here to present the case of the people against Michael Ivor Peterson. And when I'm done, I'm going to ask all of you to vote on one count of murder in the first degree. The case almost immediately caught the attention of a French film crew who created an over 10-hour documentary titled The Staircase, which focused on the trial and its subjects over the course of several years. Four years after the final entry, HBO released a meta-series with the same title, focusing not only on the Petersons, but on the French film crew who followed them throughout the trial. Innocent, culpable, l'issue du procès de Peterson, ce sera forcément tragique, crois-moi, Jean. Ok. Très bien. Organise un rendez-vous téléphonique avec ce, ce monsieur Peterson et... The result is a complex, nuanced dramatization of the case, which provided a depth to Kathleen that was impossible in the docuseries. 